Hi, I'm Margot Weinen, Professor of Process and Energy Systems Engineering at the Delft University of Technology and Scientific Director of the Next Generation Infrastructures Knowledge Platform in the Netherlands. I will briefly introduce the policy dimension of electric vehicles, which is about public policy interventions. In other words, it is about the role of government. You may wonder if the technology is available and if there is a viable business case, why should government intervene? Is there more to it than private car owners and fleet owners switching to electric vehicles just because these offer a better business case than conventional vehicles? Is government action necessary or even useful? I think that the affirmative answer to this question is best explained by pointing out how the economy hinges on the current transport and mobility system. The case of the Netherlands, uh, of the Netherlands economy serves as an excellent illustration. Through the port of Rotterdam, the Netherlands imports huge volumes of coal, crude oil and liquefied natural gas to fuel its national economy and economies in the hinterland, including Germany. In the port of Rotterdam, massive refinery capacity is available to convert crude oil into transport and heating fuels and petrochemical feedstocks. Worldwide, approximately 80% of all crude oil is converted into transport fuels for cars, trucks, ships and airplanes. So, if the transport sector is going electric, we will certainly end up with a lot of idle refinery capacity and corresponding job losses. Nevertheless, the Netherlands government is firmly committed to the Paris Climate Agreement, and so is the port of Rotterdam. The port industrial complex in Rotterdam is responsible for approximately 19% of the national carbon dioxide emissions and the port authorities have launched a sustainable development strategy to turn the port industrial complex into a low carbon complex for the future. As part of this strategy, the port of Rotterdam has joined the North Sea Wind Power Hub Consortium, which includes the construction of a so-called power link island or several power link islands in the central North Sea. At these islands, the power generated by offshore wind farms will be collected and converted to high voltage direct current for efficient transport to the continent. Furthermore, the power link islands will be equipped with power to gas facilities, which can produce hydrogen during times of surplus wind power supply. However, the most economical strategy is for electricity users to shift demand to times when sheep cheap electricity is abundantly available. Industry can still increase its demand flexibility substantially by electrifying industrial heating operations. Households in the Netherlands have limited demand elasticity unless they use electrical heating. But our cars, if we all switch to battery electric vehicles, present a huge reservoir of flexible electricity demand in the future. Organizing the matching of variable electricity production with the flexible demand of millions of cars is a challenge where government intervention is called for. So, as you can see, switching to electric cars will have far-reaching consequences for the economic structure, besides the strain it will put on the electricity system, which itself is struggling to become less carbon intensive. In the policy track of this course, we will see how the electric car affects both the electricity system and the transport and mobility system to the extent that these formerly separate infrastructure sectors are not just co-evolving, but more or less merging into a novel ICT-intensive infrastructure system. In both infrastructure sectors, government traditionally has an important role in planning and financing, in the design of policies, law and regulation, and even as an owner and operator of the system or important parts of the system. While in many countries ownership and operation have been taken over by private parties, government still has to ensure that electricity and mobility services are available and affordable for every citizen, that they are reliable 
and provide it in a way that is environmentally and socially acceptable. Both electricity and transport infrastructure are so-called critical infrastructures for every economy in every society. However, just because these systems are so critical and because they are so deeply embedded in our economy and in our daily routines, any change is likely to meet resistance from actors with vested interests, whether they are private or public. And the government has more reasons to intervene in transport and traffic. This sector is a major cause of air pollution in cities and along transport corridors. In the Netherlands, almost one-fifth of the national carbon dioxide emissions can be attributed to the transport and traffic sector. One of the challenges for government in stimulating electric mobility is to ensure that new refueling infrastructure, whether a network of charging points or hydrogen stations or both, is timely in place. So, Government intervenes to accelerate the technology development and the adoption of electric vehicles in order to create new jobs that replace the jobs that are going to become obsolete. Government intervenes to ensure that the electricity system during its transition to a low carbon system will continue to be reliable and affordable for every citizen, to improve the air quality in our cities and to reach the national climate policy goals. In each of these policy areas, electric vehicles compete with other options to reach the same policy goals. And in each of these policy areas, different kinds of government intervention are employed. The role of government is to ease and channel the transition to clean and sustainable mobility, as well as to clean and sustainable energy, while ensuring a fair distribution of the costs to ultimately improve social welfare, that is, to better the lives of all citizens. <laughs>